This is the Washington Times front page for Tuesday, August 29th, 2023. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has left the presidential campaign trail and returned to the Sunshine State in the wake of a racially motivated mass shooting in Jacksonville and Hurricane Adalia barreling through the Gulf of Mexico. Susan Friccio reports DeSantis, who is running second in many Republican primary polls, expanded a state of emergency to 46 counties in the path of Adalia. The storm is expected to make landfall this week as a Category 3 hurricane near the Big Bend region of Florida's Gulf Coast. DeSantis spoke with President Biden and officials from the Federal Emergency Management Agency about Florida's storm preparations. He also huddled with officials from the state's utility companies, as well as local sheriffs and government officials. A government study has found that suicide rates among veterans who served in the aftermath of the 9-11 attacks soared more than tenfold. Sean Salai reports six researchers in the study published in JAMA Neurology found a quickly widening disparity in suicide rates between post-9-11 veterans and the general U.S. population from 2006 through 2020. Reports have long shown that veterans who have sustained traumatic brain injuries are more likely to die of suicide than other former service members, but researchers found that rates grew annually for both groups at about the same pace. The study was funded by the Department of Defense and the Department of Veterans Affairs. House Republican investigators say President Biden used at least three email aliases during his time as vice president in the Obama administration. Susan Fericcio reports White House records show that Biden used the alias Robert L. Peters while serving as vice president. House Republicans also say Biden disguised his name on emails using the pseudonyms Robin Ware and J.R.B. Ware, both a play on his middle name and initials paired with his home state of Delaware. The president has not explained why he used the aliases, but the tactic has raised suspicions of his family's foreign business deals and the extent of his role in securing them. Pope Francis says the reactionary attitude among some American Catholics is useless in the face of doctrinal progress. Mark Kellner reports the Pope made the remarks as part of a World Youth Day gathering earlier this month, and they first appeared in the Jesuit Catholic Civilization magazine. Francis defined his American critics' attitude as organized and shaping the way people belong, even emotionally. He said being backwards-looking or nostalgic for earlier times in the church is useless, and that Catholics need to understand that there is an appropriate evolution in the understanding of matters of faith and morals. And finally, the Associated Press takes a look inside the presidential emergency satchel, colloquially known as the nuclear football. The bulky briefcase contains atomic war plans and enables the president to transmit nuclear orders to the Pentagon. It's carried by a military officer who is never far behind the president, whether the president is boarding a helicopter or exiting meetings with world leaders. During the late 1950s, President Dwight Eisenhower and his advisors worried about the United States' vulnerability to a surprise nuclear attack. So a military aide started carrying a satchel of documents that would help the president communicate with the Pentagon or other military headquarters in that event. Eisenhower passed the satchel on to his successor, John F. Kennedy, and sometime in the early 1960s, it also became known as the football, perhaps because of the Kennedy family's liking for touch football. You can find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app and find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in any major podcast app. You can also find us on social media at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.